Welcome back to First Impression Friday. We've got another really great independent and international uh, sewing pattern company to take a look at today. This one is called Ready to Sew. They are out of France. Uh, the pattern designer, Cutie Patootie um, Raphael, and the company has been around for uh, about five years. And I love this whole paragraph here, to consume more intelligently and sustainably, we need to restore value and meaning to our garments. I love that concept so much. I mean, these days you can run out and buy something, you know, for $5 and it's like the cutest thing you've ever seen, but like, you know, within a week you're over it and it's headed to the landfill. So I love that she puts thoughtfulness into that concept and describes her patterns as straightforward, minimalist, and easy to sew. So we are going to take a look at them. Um, from what I can tell in my brief amount of research that I did before I started filming, um, there are a few, very few patterns that are, have extended size ranges. I don't know if that means there are more to come or like if she's going to go back to her backlog and um, redraft for the larger size range or if she's only going to include the larger size range going forward. I'm not sure, but um, as we go through uh, the ones that do have the larger size range, I will be sure to point that out. Um, they even have over here um, where you can uh, filter by the size ranges. So that might be helpful for you if you're just looking for one or the other. But we're going to get started with the Primo t-shirt. Also, I want to say that they are a French designer. They have taken the liberty to convert the website to English, but the pricing is francs, francs, <laughs> and the measurements are all going to be uh, in the metric system. So I have a little conversion here I'll be referring to if I need to figure out, you know, the inches of something, and then I also have a franc to dollar um, conversion, and I'm assuming it's the Swiss franc, franc? Um, but let's go ahead and figure this one out. It would be 1020, no, 1020 francs is about 11 US dollars. And I think that that is for all of her patterns, 1020, 1020, 1020. Some are six. Oh, here's a free one. Um, so most of them are around the $11 price point. Okay, cool. I don't know that I'll need that um, calculator as much as I thought, but we'll use the um, measurement one as we get to talking about measurements. Okay, the Primo t-shirt description. Primo is a quick and easy to make wardrobe staple, close fitting with high cut arms. I wonder what that means. This tee is ideal for layering tucked in high-waisted skirts or pants or even under overalls. This pattern is the starting point of some infinite customizations. Click here to learn more about pattern hackings, uh, some pattern hacks that they have available. It is really beautifully fitting on both of the models. I love the little uh, band, beautiful set in sleeve. Maybe she means high cut arms means short sleeves. Yeah, there's very minimal, um, drag lines or wrinkles. It's close fitting without being like too suffocating. Not super clingy. Oh, here is a three quarter length version. It does have this um, kind of rounded, somewhere between a round and a scoop neck. I don't know why we're lifting our arms so much, but okay. Nice and long too, if you can see how long it's coming on her. There it is tucked in, and I'm assuming this is another pattern we're gonna get to look at. Okay, back to the beginning, super cool. Fabric and notions. Two-way or four-way stretch fabrics with good recovery and at least 50% cross-wise stretch. 
you know, that's going to be your um, jersey spandex, rib knit, all those things. And then for the short sleeve version, you'll need, oh God, is this 45 and 60? No, no, no. Are these sizes? Yeah, these must be the different sizes. And then 120. Yeah, okay. So this is 45 inch fabric. You would need, well, you're not getting 45 inch knit fabric. So we'll just skip that one. Here we go. So 140 centimeters is roughly one and a half yards that you need to make the short sleeve version and then the same amount for the three quarter sleeve version. Here are our line drawings. Yep, very straightforward, basic T. And then you get A4, AO, and an instruction booklet in three languages. That's pretty cool. Okay, let's take a look at this really quick and just see what kind of pattern hacks or tutorials they have. How to gather, how to turn the shirt into a bodycon dress, blending between sizes, shortening and lengthening, Primo t-shirt into a gathered dress, and then a sew along for the Primo t-shirt as well. So lots of great information, even though it is kind of a basic t-shirt pattern. Great. Tax included, sweet. Now we have the PO pants. Did we see any, hold on, hold on, have to go back. Did we see any um, size charts for this? Certainly sizing. I just missed this category altogether. My bad. Okay. So we have two different size ranges. Range one is sizes 32 to 46 and then range two is 46 to 58. And that is going to give you, I think bust is probably the most important thing for this t-shirt. So that is going to give you an 81 bust to 139. So 81 is 32 inches one what did I say I have bad short-term memory 139 to 54 and three-quarter inches almost so that is a decent uh, range for the bust um, I mean the smaller range ends at 102 that goes up to a 40 inch bust I see why they I see why they have extended their size range because a 40 inch bust is like only a couple inches larger than me and I do not consider myself a busty girl at all so yeah extending this size range um, is really helpful but take a look at this it's range one is drafted for a B cup which is what I am so I would fit into the size one or range one size range, but range two is drafted for a D cup. So I don't know if you were my waist and had a bust a couple inches larger than me, I guess that would put you in a D cup range. Some of you fuller busted gals, let me know if this makes sense to you guys to have a D cup with a, let's assume you're the smallest of range two, 107. If you have a 42.3 inch bust, are you a D cup? Let me know what you guys think about that. Um, okay, next up we have the PO pants. PO pants, description. PO pants are relaxed and easy to wear, elasticated waist pant with a slightly carrot shaped silhouette. They are designed to sit high on your natural waist, which I love that all of them are. Thank you very much. Um, they, there is a dart in the back waist for extra shaping. Great. And two deep front pockets. The finished length is just at the ankle bone, but they look really great rolled up too. Yeah, I have to say the proportions are awesome. The proportions look really good in terms of the high waist and then um, the length. Also, you can tell that there's that dart in there, even though it's elasticated and there's plenty of room 
for your hips. It's nice to have that extra dirt in there because that eliminates a little bit of the volume from here. Great, let's look at more pictures. So it's got a princess seam down the front and then the pocket is sewn into that. That's quite clever. I don't know what that would look like on a gal with thicker thighs like myself. Let's see some without hands in pockets. Yeah, so she has a more robust bum. Um, and you can see there's a lot of extra fabric here. So I'm not so sure what I think about that. Probably could have done some thin back thigh adjustment here for her. Pockets are okay. They could be a little bigger. Oh, that's not good. I don't know what happened there. I couldn't notice it in the others. Oh, because none of them face front yet. Okay, got it. So definitely a very long rise. Very long rise. Probably also why they rolled them up on her too. I think she might be petite. And they did a decent job of hiding it on all her other, oh, except for that one. Let's see some of these girls from the front. They like these booty shots, don't they? <laughs> okay, here we are on a fuller figure. And yeah, I quite like the pockets. They really are to the side and wrap around the body, which I think is quite flattering. Also, the rise looks a lot better on her. Granted, she's just standing there, but... Yeah, so maybe the rise issues are fixed in the um, range two. I think the thigh looks a lot better too, don't you? All great things to consider if you're going to make pants. Yeah, the rise is a little long on her too. So just double check that. Okay, here's the size range. It looks like the same chart. Yeah, it's the same chart. So let's look at hips on this one because, you know, there's elastic in the waist and there is no bust. So we've got, what does that say, 89? That is a small number. 89 to 151. Thirty five to fifty nine. Okay, the highest uh, size in range one is 112, which is just a little bit smaller than, well, it's four inches smaller than me. So I would be making something closer to the smaller end of the, um, of the range two. And the cup doesn't matter there. So, so yeah, I would be in range two. For reference, okay, fabric, lightweight denim, twill, canvas, gabardine, medium weight linen, or medium weight woven, such as cotton or wool flannel, chambray, poplin. Yeah, you're looking for those bottom weight wovens, but not quite as heavy. Um, not really drapey, more structured. A lot of cotton in here. The denim, the twill, canvas, all of those are cotton fabrics. So, and then you need the same yardage as the other one. And then you also need some elastic for the waistband. I do like how thick the elastic is too. They're cute little pants. Like I said, I'm really surprised by the, um, by the pocket placement, how that doesn't add volume you think it would but I think because it kind of wraps around the side a little bit um, really helps trick the eye so yeah if I made these I would certainly double check the rise I would check the thigh measurement and I would adjust the back pockets to make them a little bit bigger okay and same digital pattern details 
same price as well, around $11. Okay, next up we have the Papau, Papio, Papau wrap pants. Now, when I just saw these on the t-shirt pattern, I got to say I was not a fan. Um, so we'll see if they can win me over with some different pictures. But Papau was inspired by the Sean Fisherman pants. It's an asymmetric peg pant with a unique wrap closure and slightly cropped leg. It can be sewn with or without pockets. Because Papau does not require any closures, no zippers, buttons, or snaps, it's an ideal project for motivated beginners. Okay, so I'm imagining this is a very similar design to the pants that we just looked at, but these have some kind of magical drafting. I gotta imagine this is sewn, this is attached through the side seam. So like your side seam comes up, your crotch goes in like this, and then that panel comes out like that, I think. Yeah, I bet they are very comfortable. The back rise looks great. I also love this little detail of the um, really oversized belt carrier. So there's no elastic either in the waist. You, it's all just tied up. Well, that can't be more comfortable. Oh, here we go. We can't zoom in anymore, but... So there's got to be something holding this closed. Oh, that this tie is. She's pulling it from this side. Okay. Okay. How to tie it. I mean... Again, I'm really full at my hip. That's the widest part of me. I don't know if this is like the most flattering way to present <laughs> a fuller hip to the world. Um, gosh, these long double back darts are really nice though. I guess they got as much shaping as they possibly could in there. So that's that's good and promising and I like to see that. Yeah, there's another dart. There's one right there, too. Well, that pocket is... Oh, is that the fabric? The pocket goes all the way out to here, right? It doesn't stop right here? I hope not. Cute fabric. Great seamstress matching all the stripes I you know I'm this is one of those things where I would like I don't not like it so for that reason I would try it but I would have to be like I'd have to try it to be convinced that it it would look okay on me no I don't think anybody could just tell me no you gotta trust me they would look good on you you know what I mean so we've got the same hip measurements as before Fabric and notions, same. Oh, this is not, it's this number is the yardage. I was like, how is it the same every single pattern? Lord have mercy. Okay, so, <laughs> so we've got 240 and 290 yards or centimeters. So 2.6 yards and 2.8 yards. Oh, shoot, 290. Yeah, three and a quarter, basically. That's a lot. That is a lot of fabric. And I'm on the smaller size of that, of this range. So I wonder how much extra fabric I'd be buying if I could get away with the two. Or I guess I could just go somewhere in between these two. Oh, information here on the fabrics used for the samples. Let's see what that's about. I love when they give that information. 
Oh, here we go. Some inspo picks. Oh, look, in the history. Okay, cool, cool, cool. This is exactly what I was looking for. She had, like, read my mind. Um, here's some prototypes. This is fun. This is, like, into the mind of a designer. I love that. All kinds of information about this. And here's the exact fabrics that they used um, for their samples. A recycled cotton bed sheet, home dyed. Huh, so cool. And then the brown ones, recycled twill, hemp, and organic cotton. Leftover fabric scraps from textile production. And then the purple is a batik from Tissue Poppy. So cool. Cute, cute, cute. Yeah, I would definitely go through and read basically all of these articles. <laughs> this kind of thing is so interesting to me. Cute. Um, okay. Okay. Where were we? Oh, we need to go back here. Um, line drawings. Yeah, you get those quadruple back darts on both size ranges. And that pocket is really tall and skinny. That's a little bit strange. And same. Ooh, a video on how to tie them. That's clever. Very helpful. Okay. Okay. Excellent. That's going to be one of those things that either I make it and I am just like, oh my God, I cannot believe how good these look on me. Or I make it and be like, yeah, I kind of thought they would be a little bit, you know, unflattering. Okay, now we have the Pekka, Pika jacket. Again, with the above the, ar the arms above the head pose. I had to try that in some of my videos. Pekka takes its inspiration from traditional Japanese clothing. It is an oversized mid-season jacket with wide armholes and simplified jacket lining. With slightly cropped sleeves and gaping pockets, this stylish jacket is perfect for layering. It's an ideal sew for motivated beginners as it is a simple and as it is simple and easy to sew. I like all the reference to other cultures. There's the back. Wow, that is really, you know, they did all of those, like, oversized, huge, like, huge, huge, huge parkas on the runways last year. This is kind of a nod to that, but definitely more wearable. Yeah, she looks real comfortable. So you have a neckband. That's where this little angled pocket, same pocket that are in those first pants we looked at. Then there's a seam here, and then it drops shoulder, and that's where your sleeve is attached. Are you going to get to see? Oh, there's also possibly a center back seam. And you can see that band, that sleeve band is looking like this from the back. Roomy, comfortable, pretty um finish in the back here it is in i think a chambray maybe well that's pretty sorry i'm just mesmerized by the photos i'm unable to talk <laughs> Um, and then there's your facing and the lining. And I think what she means by simplified lining is that you have all these seams on the front, but you have separate pattern pieces for the lining so that it's all one piece. You don't actually piece it together like you did on the outside. Oh, look at it from the side. That's cool.
so many great pictures. Okay, great. I gotta imagine the size of this really, I mean, you could probably throw a dart at this chart and make one that fits you because <laughs> um, it is so oversized, but you do want to try and get close, I guess. Um, and this does have the second size range too, so. Fabrics, they are suggesting lightweight denim, twill, canvas, gabardine, medium weight linen, same thing as those pants. So just go ahead and buy up some extra yardage and make both of these things. And then here's that same kind of blog post um, that we just looked at for the Papal pants. So if you wanna learn more about the pattern and the fabric and inspiration, you can go here. Here are our here are our line drawings, and then this video is <laughs> how many eggs can you fit in the pockets? <laughs> That's cute, and then how to bag the lining. Okay, great, a video tutorial on um, bagging coat linings, which I've done before, and I love that process, but I've never filmed it before. So there you have it. Fun, a uh, great little tutorial there. All right, great. Great, great, great. Moving on. Next up, we have the overalls. Yeah, the Patsy overalls. Oh, how cute are these? I'm really going to like these, I think. Description. The Patsy overall with its discreet pockets, pretty gathers, and slightly cropped length was designed with beginner sewists in mind, especially those who are looking to add something with a little character to their wardrobes. Patsy does not require any closures. Woohoo! Okay, let's look at some of these pictures. So it looks like you have a drawstring neckline that goes into your straps, and possibly the strap is tied on one side and then scoops down around the bust. You've got princess seam all the way down the bust, the bodice, and the leg. Then you've got those same angled pockets, a little bit higher this time than the pants that we saw. You have back pockets. Well, hers look lower than hers did. So maybe they are in about the same place as the other ones. Well, that's interesting. Look how low her scoops. And, oh, because, again, she's petite, and so they tied hers lower. Or, I'm sorry, higher. They tied hers higher to get her crotch up to where it needed to be, I bet. I bet you, bet you that's what it is. Because look at this here is, like, at her waist, and hers here is, like, I don't know, a couple inches below her waist. That's got to be it. That's what I'm, that's what I'm, that's the story I'm telling. Okay, so you also have the drawstring in the back. I love these. I think these are adorable. I love how, like, loose they are. I love that you can adjust them. Now, without any zips or closures, though, my concern is how do you get them on? Do your, so you have to make sure that this opening here, this whatever the width of this is, is as big as your hips. So you wouldn't actually take your waist measurement for your waist. You would use your hip measurement. Because otherwise you got to shimmy into them somehow. I guess you could add a side zip right here, and that's how you could get into but it does look very, um, like there's a lot of ease through here. So maybe, I don't know. See, my waist and my hip are so different. Like, I think like 13 inches different or something. But yeah, having this kind of drawstring situation would hide a myriad of sins when it comes to fitting. So, I mean, you really cannot go wrong with fitting these. They hiked hers up a lot too. So if you're shorter waisted, you know, through here and you always have your jumpsuits and it's the crotch is hanging down to your, like your thigh somewhere, that's what they're doing. They're just yanking it up and then tying it a lot higher. And then if you're someone who's always long waisted and you always have camel toe, then you can let it out a little bit. 
cool. Those look great. Great, great, great. Love it so much. Super cute. I would buy this in a heartbeat. Hot pink. Yes. Love. Love, love, love. Every single picture. Every single pose. I love everything about them. So great. So, so great. And I'm assuming this is a facing. That's how this is finished. Maybe. I don't know. Love it. Okay. Sizing. We've got the same size chart. I don't need to go over that again. They do have the second size range though. Um, here's the way. Okay. So again, she freaking read my mind. Ah, oh, so the waist garment ease is 31 centimeters. So they're telling you that your waist cannot be like your waist measurement. Like you have to have this 31 extra centimeters of, um, ease in order to get it over your hips. And that's about 12 inches. So, oh God, I don't have, I think they're like, my waist is like 35 and my hip is 48. So it wouldn't quite be enough for me. Again, I am an extreme case. I get that. So, um, I would just add a little bit more ease to that waist, but that is why this little bit of information is there. So this is the ease in your full hips, and this is the ease in your waist. Makes perfect sense. Love that she has that there. Okay, and then you need somewhere between 250 to 300 centimeters of fabric. So two and three quarter yards up to three and a quarter yards. Kind of a lot. Um, and then here's that cool blog post. Here's the line drawing. So cute. Oh, there's little darts here, which I didn't notice on anybody. Guys, I want to make these. I want to make these a lot. Real bad. Okay, let's see what else we've got. Now we've got Jean-Paul coverall. If that wasn't meant to rhyme, then it's a real missed opportunity. So I think that this is when we're going to start seeing just the one size range. So I think from here on out, it's going to be, uh, Mrs. Sizing and not women's women's and not plus. I don't know how all that works, but Jean-Paul coverall workwear boiler suit, relaxed straight fit with a drop crotch and bust darts shirt collar with front button placket bust and back bust. Sorry, front and back bust pleat what is a back bust pleat uh long or short sleeves optional martingale fit to the back i don't even know what that means Ooh, this is an interesting detail it's also a drop waist in addition to a drop crotch this waist is pretty low on her buttons all the way up the front We've got more of the traditional like slash patch pockets. I mean, it does have a drop crotch, but like it doesn't look intentional. You know? Oh, the pockets aren't sewn into the waistband. That's interesting. Here's the back. Again, it has this. Oh, bust pleat, not dart. Oh, gosh. My brain wasn't working. This is the front and back bust pleat. And I was just reading it as dart because I'm a creature of habit. This has those long skinny pockets again. Oh, that is how they're wearing them. Oh, here's a short sleeve version. That's cute. So it's really low on her waist too. This is almost her high hip. Oh, they belted it, hiked up the crotch, and then uh, like bloused the um, bodice. And look at this sleeve. It's a drop sleeve, drop shoulder with the sleeve attached to that. 
it looks like an actual collar with a stand as well, which that's pretty advanced. Ooh, this is a nice detail with a little bit of waist shaping. Back to the front, okay. So here's our sizing for B cups, 32 to 46. So again, I'm not fitting into that. 111 centimeters. Yep, too small for me. But to be honest, like I pref if I'm gonna make a boiler suit, it's gonna have like a traditional waist, you know, the waistband at the waist seam, no drop crotch. The pockets are gonna be sewn into the waist seam. But I do like this detail a lot. So here's the ease that they're aiming for, bust, waist, hip. Fabric is gonna be your medium weight wovens. Yep. And some interfacing, you need somewhere between 260 and 280 centimeters of fabric. Here's the blog post, line drawings. There aren't a ton of variations in each of the patterns. On um, this one you have a short sleeve, long sleeve. The um, first little knit uh, t-shirt we looked at, that had a couple of options, but other than that, everything's pretty much been just the one option. But again, at 11 bucks a piece, you know, and all those sew-alongs and all that information, I'm not mad at that. Oh, and here's an expansion pack. In order to what? Is to supplement the original boiler suit pattern to make a number of variations using a combination of the original pattern pieces and new expansion pack okay you would get the front bodice with hidden placket front leg with slanted pocket oh hidden placket right here well that looks nice i also love it as a skirt um, a three-quarter sleeve a dress option a drawstring and then all the instructions and look, they put the weight, the pocket goes into the waistband this time. Again, read my mind. That must be the three quarter sleeve. I like this version infinitely better. I don't know what it is. So I would have to buy the expansion pack as well. Yeah, the drawstring helps a lot. And the hidden placket is really nice too. Cute. I love the little mixing of all the denims. That is really fun. Maybe that's something I can consider for the fall. Okay, here the same size problem though. So <laughs> don't get too excited, Lindsay. <laughs> um, okay, same fabrics. Line drawings are as follows. And same... Uh, digital info. All right, here is their free pattern, and I am going to download this so that we can take a look at their instructions. Okay, so here are the pattern instructions. I want to point out I didn't have to give any information, not even an email address. You literally click download and it downloads to your computer. So if you're one of those people that doesn't normally like to do the downloading because you have to give away so much information on this, you don't have to give any. Um, so they've got a little note to everybody um, at the beginning about printing, seam allowances, and making muslins, a little um, cover photo, how to take your measurements, Uh, fabric requirements, fabric type, supplies or notions, your fabric cutting layout, which is really just, you know, two squares for the skirt, a waistband, and some pockets. Oh, it even tells you 
what is cut on the fold and what is cut with scissors. That's what serge means, right? Is that French for something? And then here's your glossary. Ready to sew. Again, seam allowances. <gasps> There's a playlist just for... Oh, I thought it was music. Is it music? is really so cute. I've never seen that before. It's a playlist to kind of get you in the mood for making this particular fabric. I love that. I love that. What a game changer. Like I will remember this pattern company forever now because of that. That is so cool. All right. And now we're going into uh, the steps on how to sew the skirt. Pretty easy stuff. Nice big illustrations, an illustration for every step. Each step is broken down. Right? Lots of white space on the pages too. So if you wanted to take some notes or anything, um, you could do that. So there's, there are, there's the instruction booklet. So cool. I am obsessed with the playlist. That is just so smart. Um, or not really that smart. It's just so interesting and clever. But this is the pattern that we were just looking at. High-waisted skirt with a waistband, front bu button placket, and then the pockets that were attached. Really simple. I don't expect much from a um, free pattern. Um, is this top one of their patterns? Because we need to get to that one quickly. That is cute. But it's free, so... Go grab it, the Justine skirt. Justine actually, no, I didn't, I don't think it comes in the larger size ranges. It'd be easy enough to fix though because everything's just a square or a rectangle. Yeah, it just has the one size range. But everything's just a square or rectangle, so you could do a little bit of drafting on your own and get it to be a larger size. All right, this is the Jocko pullover. Love the shoulder buttons. Let's read this first. This boxy fit sweater with detailed side vents and a relaxed fit 7 8 sleeve. Perfect for chilly days. The slouchy silhouette can be effortlessly dressed up or down, making it an essential for every wardrobe. View 1 features shoulder buttons and view 2 features a turtleneck. Well, this like waffle knit fabric they got is really great as well. Again, with a drop shoulder and the sleeve attached to that. I don't think we've seen one set in sleeve other than that basic tee. We've got a really, really cool turtleneck here, how it's all sewn in one. So, you know, everyone's favorite is the toaster sweater, but the toaster sweater's turtleneck really is quite short. Um, it's not a full turtleneck like this. So it's nice to see that on this pattern. Super cool. So chic. I love that neckline so much. I mean, it wouldn't take much more fabric to turn this into a dress either. It's already so long. Obviously, you could shorten it. Oh, it has snaps on the side too. That's really cute. These two look totally different. So cute. Love the snaps. Love the tunic length. Yeah, this one's really great. And it's so boxy that if you're on the upper end or just outside of her size range, um, I think that you could finagle it to fit. Because, like, for me, obviously my hips are what would not fit into this. But because you have this little um, opening here, it's kind of negligible. I don't know that I would ever snap it all the way shut anyways. But even if I were going to, I could add, you know, an inch to the side seams. It's a really easy alteration to make. And then that would buy me the extra four inches that I would need. So 
Um, they do have here how much ease should be in the bust and the hips. And it is drafted for a B cup, but again, it is so roomy in the bust. I mean, 20 centimeters of ease. Fabrics are going to be medium to heavyweight jersey knit with 20% stretch, such as boucle knit. I think that means sweatshirt fabric, French terry, wool jersey, cotton polar fleece. And then view two with the um, turtleneck is the, uh, they recommend boiled wool jersey, which that sounds comfy, right? So comfy. Okay, two different um, views for two different um, yardage requirements, 12 buttons or snaps, some interfacing for view two, probably for that neckline. Yep. Cute, cute, cute. All right, what is next? Next up, James Fisherman's Smock. Well, that's cute. Classic Fisherman's Smock Revisited. The Fisherman's Smock is a hard-wearing sailcloth smock once worn as an outer garment by fishermen. You'll love the neat and strong construction of this garment and its discreet charm. Additional features include a front opening fastened with a button, kimono sleeves, decorative and functional top stitching, big kangaroo pocket or side pocket, side slits, and a curved hem. So again, drop shoulder, the sleeve attached. Here's the curved hem, nice and roomy. We've got a little pocket here, kangaroo pocket here. This is the button closure. And this one does not have a collar with a stand. It's just a one piece collar, so it's easier to sew. This fabric definitely has that washed and worn look. Here's a little side slit. It looks really comfortable. I can imagine this also, I don't know what the fabric requirements are, um, but I can imagine this out of some kind of like athletic fabric or some kind of um, nylon, not necessarily waterproof fabric, but you know, something a little bit more outdoorsy as well as like a washed and worn linen like this. Again, very roomy, very oversized. So if you don't want to do the kangaroo pocket, you can do this little asymmetrical one. That's also fun. Oh, yeah, why not? Store some things in there. Nice detail on the top of the split. Like she said, um, really strong construction. Sizing. So this is only 32 to 46. Fabric, strong woven fabrics, denim, twill, canvas, gabardine, linen, and coated linen, which might be what they used. Here are our line drawings. Cool. James. All right, now we've got Julian. I think all of the patterns are J names. Julian is, is it the dress or the? Inspired by classic work where each seam of this jacket is top stitched or enclosed to hold up for a lifetime. This unlined button up chore jacket features one of the, features one front chest pocket, two front hand pockets, button cuffs, and a real knack for getting things done. Yes. Julian's boxy fit is perfect for layering. <laughs> okay. I like the little pleat again. The little pockets though. I, every pattern has a little teeny tiny pocket. I would be making those larger. And the angled pocket again. Definitely a distinctive feature of all of her patterns. Oh, here's how the sleeve comes together. Well, I don't know. This pocket looks okay now that I'm seeing it flat. All right. 
This one goes from 32 to 52 on the sizes of this one. So it does have a bit of an extension to it, but all again with B cups. Your fabrics are, oh, they give you the specific weight, either eight to 14 ounces uh, per square yard of cotton canvas, cotton denim, moleskin, linen, or corduroy. So yeah, they definitely want you to have it. I mean, that's a weighty jacket for sure. Uh, that's not chambray. That is like, <laughs> that is hard working, like she said. Um, buttons or snaps and some interfacing. Here's our line drawing. You just have the one version. So yeah, I'm not into these kind of layering pieces, but it is a really well-made, well-designed one if you are into that. Next, we have the Jazz ebook. I wonder what that means. It's 1780. <clears throat> Oops. Oh, Lord. This is like almost 20 bucks. 80 variations of this jazz pattern are apparently in this book. The jazz ebook offers a whopping 80 variations, bodices, all come with a button front opening option. Loose fitting dartless bodice with a v-neck, close fitting bodice with darts and u-neck and an overalls bib. Bottoms, flare pants, straight pants, shorts, straight skirt above the knee, flare skirt with ruffle, peplum, bishop sleeve, short sleeve, and then four different, oh, hacks, four different hacks for you to try as well. Well, isn't that cool? So the jazz is a dress or a jumpsuit? No, it's a jumpsuit. It's, it's baseline is a jumpsuit and then you can um, alter it to, or, or within the expansion pack or ebook, um, draft a couple skirt options. But I think in its natural form, <laughs> it is a jumpsuit, okay. So here's the wrap. They did have to pin this one. You can see here that it is falling open. Um, hard to, I don't think it's a true wrap, so you might be able to alter this pretty easily or pin it like they did. This is the short sleeve as well. And this must be the loose fitting one without the, um, without the darts. Here is close fitting with bust darts that I don't quite see anywhere and a U neckline. Or is that the V? No, that's a V. So this is the loose fitting one. Maybe this um, wrap version is the original pattern. This must be the original pattern. That's what I'm going to go with. So option one in the book is this bodice. Oh, here's the skirt with a ruffle. See, there's the original bodice. Oh, and this really pretty sleeve. Love the sleeve. There it is as a romper, which is where you're making the shorts. Cool. Oh, what? So cute. I need that in my life. Man, okay, and then here is the U front. I don't know, it's hard to tell them all apart. Here's the back of the overalls. They added a little zipper. Here's the front bib. Show us the front, show us the front. Whoa, that has overalls without a top on. They just left her naked. Are we gonna get, no, but here's the top. That's super cute. Here we go. There's the overalls front bib. Not much to it. 
not much to it at all. I much prefer the, um, you know, regular sleeved bodice. Okay. I think this is our, no, that's not true. Here's the scoop neck. Oh, here's our dart with the scoop and then the button front. So all of these have the option of a button front. You can either have it cut on the center fold or do a button front. So that makes this doubled. So there's actually six bodices plus the original. That's seven. I love little things like this. Oh, all in one facing. You can see that through here. And I like that the pocket is not sewn into the side seam. It's a little bit toward the front. That's very flattering. Here's some good views of the um, overalls. So cute. There's some really good options in there. Um, the size chart goes from 32 to 52 on the size range, all for B cups. Here's different fabric recommendations for each version. Cool. <laughs> Given the infinite variations, it is impossible to give the fabric footage needed. So what does that mean? She could have at least said, if you're making the pants, you'll need this much, this bodice, you need that much. I guess you just buy like a couple yards, three yards, four yards, and hope for the best. Maybe in the ebook it says, oh, look at this. That is incredible. Incredible. Oh my gosh, it keeps going, keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. Don't stop. Awesome. That's worth 20 bucks to me. Cute. Cute, cute, cute. Is that it? Well, let's minimize that. Yeah, that's it. That's cool. Love that. Good idea. Good concept. All right, here's that cutie little tank top that we saw earlier, Jilly. Vacay all day in this cropped tie front top. Jilly is fitted at the shoulders and falls into a relaxed fit below the bust. Wear it during the day, paired with high-waisted jeans, or make it in a beautiful crepe for an elegant evening out. We've got a bust dart, we've got a waist seam, and that goes into the tie, and the tie is actually fully lined. Or do it without the tie. Full facing. Or an all-in-one facing. That's cute. Super cute. Love, need, want, have to have. <laughs> Get in my cart. Okay, I think we're looking at the same pictures again. All right, perfect. All right, sizing, go the size 32 up to 46 on this one. So the bust is the only portion that's close fitting. So that is the part you'd have to pay the most attention to. And then lightweight, light to medium weight woven fabrics. Poplin, linen, linen and cotton gauze, silk crepe, rayon, chambray, Wax cotton, maybe? So, yeah, it needs to be lightweight, but it still needs to be structured because you've got to hold up to this um, kind of fuller shape. Um, if it were too lightweight, like a chalet or something, this would just, you would lose all this shape being through here. So cute. Love that. All right, now we've got jean, t-shirt, and dress. Classic boyfriend cut t-shirt with a dress option. The pattern comes with four variations you can make from classic t-shirt to lightweight sweater. So the first t-shirt was close fitting. Um, this one is 
looser, boxier, more of a boy boyfriend tee. There's the dress version that's really cute. I love the hem of it. Rolled up sleeve, little baby pocket. Oh, there's the sweatshirt version. Again, with a little drop shoulder and the sleeve attached to that. We also have a little baby cuff here. I kind of prefer a more substantial wrist cuff. And also the sleeves do seem a little bit wide, right? I mean, she could probably eliminate, I don't know, up to an inch from that to get a little bit of a closer fit. There's the dress again. Okay, back to the beginning. Sizing is the 32 to 46 size range, alphanumeric, extra small to extra large. Here are your fabrics, jersey knits, like Tencel, cotton jersey, cotton jersey, <laughs> uh, Ponte, and silk jersey. Here's your line drawings. All right, now we've got the gym dungaree. I feel like my younger followers are really going to like this one. Jim is described semi-fitted overalls with front side pockets and back patch pockets, crop pant overalls, short overalls, and a pinafore dress. So it has this like little button front detail with a drop waist pleated at the um, high hip. There's a little shorts version. Crisscross straps in the back. Adjustable ties, I think. Maybe not. I can't tell if that's sewn right there. Or, I don't know, I can't tell what's happening. They've got to be adjustable straps. There's the back. Wow, really great fit. Close fitting, tailored look. And then here is the pinafore. I'm not the hugest fan of this kind of version of an overall. Um, it's just not my thing. And plus those pleats on that hip, I don't know that I could ever do that. Okay, so 32 to 46 size range. Woven, such as cotton poplin, velvet, lightweight denim, tinsel, wool flannel, cotton twill, and faux leather. Faux leather. Yes, get it. Yeah, D-rings. That makes them adjustable, right? And then here's your line drawings. I mean, it wouldn't be that hard to, you know, add some length within here to raise this up to make it like an actual overall, but... I don't know, still with the hip plates. She does have the, you know, uh, quadruple back darts in there, though, which I really like. All right. Ooh, Juliet skirt. Juliet is the ultimate high-waisted A-line skirt. Just above the knee length makes it classic for all seasons. Style it with an oversized knit during the day or a beautiful lace blouse in the evening. A full lining ensures the faux leather doesn't cling and a zip at the back creates a smooth silhouette. It can be sewn with or without pockets. Lap zipper. Yep. I don't know exactly when this pattern was released, but I gotta tell you, I'm sure it was like on all the runways and all the magazines when she was doing this. It has that same little slash packet pocket, which again, I love. Love, love. This look is so cute. Here's your sizing, the 32 to 46 size range. Um, faux leather, leather, suede, denim, thick cotton, linen, real heavyweight stuff. 
go. I love the top stitching details too. Pretty basic sort of situation, but these provide just a ton of really great style lines. A ton, a ton. All right, now we've got the Jamie cardigan. They really are all J names. Modern, casual, oversized fit. Jamie is your new best friend. The pattern features a V-neck, long and gathered sleeves, and a gathered hem. The loose fitted silhouette can be effortlessly dressed up or dressed down. View one, the hip sits at the hip. And it has two front patch pockets and gathered sleeves. View two, the hem sits at the waist. It has gathered three, uh, seven eighths inch sleeves and a slightly smaller arm side than view one. Just meaning it has like a closer fit. Oh, I see. It's like a if a cardigan and a sweatshirt had a baby. A sweatigan? A card shirt? <laughs> So this is the view one, and this is view two. Okay. The view two doesn't really sit at the waist. It sits more at the high hip, but I get what she means. Two different lengths for sure. That's probably sweatshirt fleece there. I like, you know me, I love a cropped um, sweater of any kind. So this is the alphanumeric sizing. So knits with 20% stretch, boucle knit, sweatshirt, French cherry. Yeah, some different sweater knits would have that. And then here's our line drawings. Yeah, the cropped one with this cute little gathered sleeve with the really deep cuff. I love that. Cute, Jamie. All right, we also have the Joe Blazer. Joe is a slim fitted tailored jacket with some classic features. The jacket is lined, partially interfaced, and has princess seams. Details include welt pockets with flaps, two color options, and tailored sleeves. Yeah, this was, you know, probably a few years ago when this boyfriend, I mean, the boyfriend blazer is still very, very much a thing. Um, not really my style. I don't love oversized anything. <laughs> I don't really do the oversized thing at all. Maybe like a knit t-shirt, but. And then these pa pictures are really hard to see anything that's going on. But here are our line drawings. That's much better. So you can see all the seaming that is put in. It has a two-part sleeve. It has princess seams in the front and the back, as well as a center back seam. And then here are your welt pockets. It has a um, like a traditional two-part collar. So pretty advanced um, kind of thing here. And there's your sizing. Medium weight woven fabrics like wool crepe, tweed, gabardine, flannel, cotton velvet, and denim. Joe. Here's the Jack trench coat. I'm kind of loving this. A contemporary twist on a trench coat. It has a relaxed fit and features big curved lapels, a gathered collar, and a self tie waist. A gathered collar. Please show me that. First of all, this is everything. So cute. I love these pockets. Give it to me. It's cute. Maybe she didn't mean gathered collar. <gasps> A gathered collar. I get it. That's cute. And this little back, um, little vent situation and a little, um, inverted pleat situation. This really is like the traditional trench, like, twisted. That's real cute. Oh, 
I would wear this over like a regular like pea coat type of thing any day. Any day. Jack calls for a lightweight and fluid fabric, gabardine, cupro, cotton, tencel blend, which is like a rayon and cotton blend, wool blend. I also bet tencel twill would be really great, which is pretty easy to find nowadays. And you just have the one version. So you can let the collar out if you want. They didn't do that in any of these pictures, but you can let the collar out and lay flat with these little ties here. Cute. I love that. You don't need that much fabric. I feel like those overalls took the same amount of fabric as this. It is fully lined though too, so. What was that called? Jack? Yeah, Jack. Now we've got Jasper. Jasper's kind of calling my name. Relaxed fit wrap style jacket designed to be worn loose and features a shawl collar, gathered shoulders, patch pockets, looks great left open or tie it up for a cozy feel. It has actual belt carriers so you don't lose those. You guys know how I feel about those things. Oh, I see. It's kind of like a waterfall. That's fun. And here's the gathered shoulder. Well, that's very kind of like high style, very fashion-y. Well, I quite like this. More pictures. Um, I actually really like this. It's simple, but also special. Like it's not something you see in the stores in the best way possible. It's like something you wish you saw in stores. Cool. Here's your size range. Fabric, she's recommending wool crepe, lightweight wool, or cotton flannel. And then in summer, you can do rayon, tinsel, linen, rayon, and linen blends. Interesting. I love it. And I kind of love that she matched the lining. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong, like a gingham, navy gingham lining would also have been excellent. But the matchy-matchy makes it feel a little bit more uh, upscale and elevated. I love that. I think I'm up to five patterns now that I just have to have. Look at Jude. Look how cute Jude is. Oh, guys, I'm in trouble. Take all my money ready to sew. Jude is a casual top with gathered raglan sleeves and a boat neck. Oh, can be sewn as a dress or top. With short sleeves or three-quarter sleeves. The top falls into a relaxed fit below the bust. The dress has a gathered hem and inseam pockets. I'm going to need to see that gathered hem. This is so pretty. And it really does give that hourglass shape, right? Like big shoulder, skinny um, waist, and then out for your hip. Love that. A little French tuck. Oh, I see. It's like a bubble hem. Hmm. I mean, obviously, you don't have to gather it. You could leave it open. Did we see the three-quarter sleeve yet? Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, um, again, I feel like I'm on the fence about this one, just like I am about those um, Thai fisherman pants. It could be great. Or it could be like, what was I thinking? But this is how you learn things, guys. You just got to go for it. You know, you can't be afraid of like wasting money or time or anything because you never know. I may fall into a silhouette that I never would have considered that I absolutely love. So here's your fabric requirements. Line drawings are like so... I love that shoulder detail. Again, not complicated, not hard to do, but really, really elevated and elegant. I feel like tucked into some high-waisted, like, black pants. Come on. You'd look like a million bucks. 
All right, we've got a dress. Speaking of blue gingham, this is the Jolene dress. Again, another J name. Feminine and easy to wear, Jolene has a flattering, semi-fitted shape thanks to perfectly gathered princess seams on both front and back. Gathered princess seams. Take that in for a second. Perfect for mid-season and summer, Jolene is high-waisted and has a gathered skirt slash peplum. So here's your gathered princess seams. So Such a cute idea. Like, I've never seen gathered vertical seams before. Kind of a, <laughs> kind of went a little crazy on the buttons, but um, also she's calling it high waisted, but I feel like her waist is up here somewhere. That one looks about right though. Gosh, I love that so much, and the cutest little collar. Oh, there it is in Swiss dot. So cute. Well, the collar's a little pointy, but that's easy enough to fix. Here's the little tabs on the sleeves. I like that. Curved hem on the peplum. Cute. Cute. Cute, cute, cute. Um, oh, there's a round collar and a pointed collar. Show me that round collar. Oh, perfect. Love the round collar. Um, well, so the yard, the fabric requirement depends on the collar. That seems odd. But, okay. <laughs> if you say so. If you say so. Line drawings with the short collar and the long collar, short sleeve. So the short sleeve is grown on, but the long sleeve or the three-quarter sleeve is actually sewn a set-in sleeve. Curved hem on both. Uh, maybe curved or not on the peplum. And then there's the back. All right. That's really cute. All right. Jumpy pant slash short. Okay, we're doing another tie front situation. Jumpy is inspired by the tie fisherman pants. Again, no zip buttonholes or elastic needed. It's perfect project for motivated beginners or people that have a hard time getting pants to fit like me. So this looks like that same pattern, but it has two, two ties instead of just the one. And it also, like the bulk of it is up here at your high hip, not down here through your low hip like the other pants were. And it comes in shorts, obviously. You can just crop the length. That's cute! Okay, I would give these a try before the other ones, but the problem is these don't come in the extended size range, and my hips, my butt, does not fit into her small size range. 111, what was that? 43.7 inches. I'd have to do some significant, what would that be, to get to 48 with no ease? So you gotta imagine there's at least like, I don't know, call it three inches of ease, that's 51. I mean, no, that's not happening. <laughs> that's not happening. I'm gonna reach out to her and see if she's planning on doing the extended sizes in the other patterns. Lightweight fabrics, yeah. Line drawings. Oh, I didn't notice that the back only had these little darts. Did we see the back? Yeah, but there's a shirt over it, so that's probably why I didn't notice there's like no waistband. Probably a facing in there though at least. All right, jumpy. All right, this is Joanne Kulots. Elastic waist, I see. Shorts or culottes with elasticated waist, 
curved patch pockets, Joanne has curved back seam and two waistband options, either with two channeled elastics and a small ruffle or three narrow channeled elastics. Look at this little detail. That is fun. This cropped tee is really cute too. So here, you're not going to be able to see because I can't zoom in, but you can see two channels of elastic and then the top is left like a paper bag waist. Very slight. Or you can do it, well, they're not going to show it. They also have these, this as like a color block situation. This little tulip thing, does she mention that? No, just curved back seam. And this one has the three channels. One, two, three. So there's either elastic in this top one or not. Those are your two options. This feels like it has some kind of curve to it as well. Really flattering. This is just to me, well, do you guys think it emphasizes or takes away? I think it takes away because you wouldn't have horizontal stripes going across your front. Now you would have them across the back, but they're broken up by this panel here. And I don't know that I'd make it in stripes anyways, but. Interesting. Yeah, classic waist, paper bag waist, lightweight woven fabric with drape, Avoid thick fabric as it would be too much bulk in the elastic waistband. You can make the shorts with a knit fabric though, but pick a lightweight one like French cherry. That's cool. This is so interesting to me. I've never seen anything like that. Oh, you also have this version. That's why the pants were color blocked. I get it. Or is this the back? That's the back. Front, back, front, back. Okay, okay, okay. I get it now. I get it now. Interesting. Those are cute and different. Okay, now we've got, oh, the Kulots expansion pack, which includes what? This is not, okay. Turn your patch pockets, Joanne, into a short or pant with slanted pockets. So it takes away that tulipy thing. Well, that's just too bad. That was the part I thought was the coolest. But I guess if you're more of a traditionalist for a little bit more, you can get that version. Now we have the Josette dress. Josette is a loose fitting top or dress with grown on sleeves. It is casual and feminine with a beautiful heart shaped yoke and a deep V neck. The dress has seam pockets and falls above the knee. Yeah, that is cute. It does look like a heart. Oh, I love the side view. Here's the dress. That is cool. Sorry if that was really loud. I had to plug in my phone or the charger. Oh, and it's like a line. That's cute. Can you see how the seam works? So fun. Loose fitting right up my alley these days. Yep. Tinsel rayon linen, cotton gauze. Here's your line drawings. Those won't be happening, but <laughs> you guys know I hate the little teardrop floppy flap pockets. But this is cute. I love that she accentuated, like, let's really drive the point home that it's a heart shape with pink and hot pink. <laughs> let's just go all in on this. So fun. Josette. We have Janet. Oh. Jeanette is cute. The top is fitted at the shoulders and falls into a relaxed fit below the bust. The shirt is made of a single piece of fabric without side seams. What? 
It features two yokes and is available with short or long sleeves. What? It's just a tube. It's just a tube. Look how cute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't raise your arms too high, honey. <laughs> okay, no side seams, but you do have this, which is something. It's not just totally a tube. Fabrics are medium weight, light to medium weight, linen, linen blends, cotton, lightweight wool, and wool blends, silk charmeuse, silk twill. Well, oh, the line drawing is broken. Shoot, that's the one thing I wanted to see. So is the shoulder have like a, yeah, it's like a separate shoulder cap piece. Then there's this panel through here, which I'm assuming provides shaping. And then this is like a circle skirt. <coughs> that has, this is more lightweight, obviously, so it doesn't stick out quite as much. Short sleeve versus seven eighths sleeve with a little button, I think. It's short, but it's cute in that way, you know. All right, last three. We've got the Jane shirt. Jane is a classic shirt with a twisted front. The pattern doesn't have any side seams either. It features slightly dropped shoulders, a rounded collar, and button-up detail. Yeah, kind of a busy fabric. Hard to really see. The twist does look really cool, though. It's like magic. How does that work? I don't know. There's your sizes. Fabric, all the lightweights. The fabric needs to be reversible with two different sizes. Shiny or matte. Or have a similar right and wrong side. The main body of the shirt, front and back, is made of a single piece. So that's important to know. The wrong side will show. Here's your line drawings. I wish it was a little bit shorter. Again, easy enough to adjust, but I wish it were this length finished. But I think she has this tucked in because the next picture is the actual length of it. But that's Jane. And Jane really does not have any side seams. Like, not like the other one that had the little inset panel thing. We've got Joseph. Joseph is a relaxed tailor fit jacket with a whole host of details. It is fully lined and has peasant pockets with box pleats and raglan sleeves, also with pleats. I like this little welt pocket and the little baby collar's cute. Raglan sleeves, did she say? With pleats, that's so cute. Show me those shoulders. That's cute. I like the contrast sleeve. Well, she doesn't really show the shoulders that much. Only this little itty bitty bit. And that little itty bitty bit. All right. There's a seam along the top. Oh, because it's raglan. Yeah, that makes sense. Sizing's the same. Fabrics are twill, gabardine, denim, and canvas, and wool. And then we have our line drawings. Pleats in the welt. Did we see that? Oh, yeah. Very subtle, but cute. I love this little itty collar. Cute, cute, cute. Joseph jacket. All right, this is the Janice top. 
Janice is a peplum style top with two neckline options. Semi fitted top falling into a relaxed fit below the waist. The peplum is made of a single piece of fabric and has no side seam. She was really in a in a zone with that round neckline and then also a boat neckline with a back option, back opening. That's cute. I feel like we've seen this in like McCall's or something before. Um where they have your, you know, basic bodice, but this little circle-y skirt peplum type thing. Oh, boat neckline with a back opening. Is that what that is? That's cute. Or pull on. Yeah, 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 totally. Oh, funky plaid. I like this. I like this a lot. I like this more than I probably should. <laughs> I think that this side is a little bit shorter than this side. So the asymmetry is just like calling my name. And the back is cute. Yeah, cute, cute, cute. Fabrics are cotton PK, which I think is what this is. Cotton flannel, silk twill, linen, crepe, tinsel, viscose, double cotton gauze. Oh, maybe it's double gauze. Um, so yeah, all those light to midweight wovens. But I think the lighter the better to get a really pretty flouncy detail here. So good. All right, you guys, I think that is the end. Ready to sew. Yep, that's it. Those are all the ready to sew patterns. What did you guys think? I was really blown away by a few of them. I will definitely be making a purchase. Um, I am going to reach out to her about the sizing and see what's going on, what the plans are for that. If I get an update from her, I will be sure to let you guys know what she says, um, either in a like a post here on YouTube um, and or in my let's chat video at the end of this month. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, happy shopping, leave a comment. Um, let me know what you think, but I really do feel like there's something for everyone in this collection and I'm eager to hear if you agree, but that's going to do it for me today. I will see you all very soon. Bye.